Uh, good day everybody. Physics critical knowledge. This is approximately a five minute video but it contains a lot of information. There probably isn't enough time to read everything on the screen so ideally uh, either you pause the video or you replay it a couple of times. I was trying to put a lot of detail in a short period of time and that's the way I decided to do this particular video. Dynamic kinematic trigger deactivated. These are rigid body types and here we just take a quick look at the usage of each one of those body types. Penetrations. That means that physics has detected that one hole is intersecting with another hole and what do we do with that penetration? It's probably a good thing to pause this video at sections and just get the details. I prefer to process all penetrations because I figure we're doing a physics animations and we should be handling pr penetrations from the beginning. The hole, as always, is very important. And here I just try to give it a quick example of what we mean when we're saying the hull. And no, a sphere hull is not the same as a convex hull. And when you do things right, you can do some really cool stuff with physics. So now we're going to look at making some adjustments. First, we need to understand angular and linear motion because that's when we make the angular and linear adjustments, right? And here we're going to look at four different videos of chain activity. I've got the gravity set high because that introduces this over-exaggerated motion. But we can control this stuff. And some of the most effective settings are um, the dampening and the velocity limits. But you really need to kind of understand them a little bit to be able to adjust them effectively, right? So exit velocity, that means when we have penetrating objects, they're going to try and depenetrate themselves because convex holes aren't perfectly shaped to the objects themselves. Sometimes we can use this behavior to create explosive effects, but other times we really want to control it, right? So don't be scared of the um, exit velocity setting. An impulse is like when two objects collide, how do they interact with each other and you can adjust that velocity. And angular versus linear, we kind of talked about it earlier. Here we can see we've got way too much control, right? Now we've got a much more effective animation and a shameless little self-advertisement for me. Um, it's a good course if you want information. Dampening, you know. Dampening is a cool thing that kind of slows down things over time and you should play with these different settings to get awesome effects on your animation. So, you know, there are really five critical settings here that that help us control our um, animations and hyperactivity. It seems ever present in TIEFLOW Phys X especially when you pin between objects like this chain, but it can be controlled. These five settings are very critical to controlling this stuff. Here we can see gravity. Does it help you or does it hurt you? All right, and then we can still control it. We just got to understand our settings. One of the mistakes I made at the beginning was thinking mass is weight. And somehow when I adjust the weight, the mass I get this great weight change. Mass is really a setting that kind of changes how two particles behave between each other you know and then you see the supposed weight difference between two different particles. It can be used for great effect but realizing that mass is between two particles. Mesh hulls are a great way to drive your dynamic animations. Direct contact or directly uh, overriding the motion of a dynamic object is not a good idea. Use something like animating mesh holes to drive your animations.
In the main settings of tie flow is a time scale setting. It's not a physics setting per se, but it's a really cool thing to use with physics animations. A last shameless plug. Catch you guys later.